to a brand new We Need to Talk this week. Um, we're going to be talking about something that's very timely um, and of yes. the moment. It's been in the news recently. You've probably seen some articles, some headlines yeah. about Harvey Weinstein. Um, he has been accused of many, many counts of sexual harassment, rape, a lot of very troubling, troubling accusations yeah. from uh, many prestigious and unknown women in Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. And so with the wake of all of that and all these women coming forward, um, I was also telling Kelly that on Facebook, there's also been this big um, Me Too movement where women are coming forward and just saying, um, you know, I have also been a victim of sexual harassment or assault and um, just in an effort to show the magnitude of this problem and how many women it really um, affects. Caitlin and I were talking in the office earlier about this topic, and it was shocking to see how many instances we could come up with. Just between the two of yeah, us. So and so quickly. It, yeah, so quickly, and from, I mean, as early as, like, seventh grade to as recent as, like, a couple days ago. Yeah. So. Um, We just thought this was something that we really wanted to touch on because we said, you know, how do we fix this? Obviously, there is no easy answer and we're not going to fix it in this one conversation. But we agreed that the first step is to really be open to talking about it and um, starting that conversation. So that's what we're going to do here today. I was telling Kelly when um, I think I was this instance was when I was in, I think, eighth grade. Um, maybe ninth grade, I went to a, um, a restaurant. I was meeting my parents and um, yeah. their family friends at a restaurant. And I walked in and a man at the front of the restaurant um, grabbed me by the waist when I um, walked in and pulled me onto him. And I um, pushed him off and um, you know got away and started walking to where my family was. And he followed me, but when he saw that I was with my family, He left, and I didn't tell my um, anyone that I was with about it until we left because I didn't want to cause a scene. Even though obviously, and that was one of the cases when I knew something hadn't happened. I mean, I wasn't right with what had happened. It sounds scary. It was. I mean, I was terrified. It was obvious. I was so young. I was by myself. I and in the I think that what really pisses me off about it is that this man was surrounded by a bunch of his other male friends and so yeah. and who weren't who were completely just like egging the whole thing Complicit. on and, yeah. yeah and um so yeah but it was like even though i knew that it wasn't right and i knew yeah. that he needed to be you know now i look back and i'm like you know that guy was never held accountable for his actions if he had done if he would do that to me um in a public place right. in front of other people imagine right. what he could potentially be yeah. you know um you know, what he could do in private with someone else or, you know, anything. So, um, that was like an instance where it was like, I was very sure that what had happened, what happened, yeah, it was yeah. not okay, but I was too afraid to say anything about yeah. it at the time. Um, yeah. It's scary when there's so many other people around and like his friends and they're not doing anything. No. Yeah. And you- that can kind of add to the feeling of, I don't, should I say anything? And it's unfortunate that it has to be put on the woman being harassed to speak up or nothing will happen. It's interesting because when we were talking about our experiences, we were saying, you know, this was an experience that, again, I was very sure of what had just happened, um, even though I didn't do anything about it. And then fast forward to, like, last year. Yeah. Another instance um, that that Kelly and I were discussing was, Um, when I went to, there was a coffee shop that I used to go to every single morning on my way to work. It was like the perfect spot. It was on my way and you know, the coffee was good and it was affordable and all (laughs) of the stuff. I loved going here. Um, until there was this man who, um, worked there who I encountered who the first day I walked in, it was just very innocent. He just said, um, you know, uh, my gosh, like you look lovely today. Um, something something offered me to for my cop offered to compliment compliment <laughs> offered to pay for my Com- coffee yeah. Com- my coffee yeah um 
And I was like, no, thank you. Like, I've got it. Um, And I left feeling weird because I was like, I don't know if I should feel grateful that he just tried to pay for my coffee and then he was so complimentary, but I felt uncomfortable about it. And then I noticed that every single morning that I went back, I would just say, I would think like, I really hope that he's not in there because every single time he was, he would say, my gosh, you just make my day every time you come in here. You look so beautiful. Like, I love your shirt today. Or like, yeah. like oh, do you have a meeting? You look extra nice. And things like that. That, um, again, it was just so, it was off-putting. But I felt like I, sh- I didn't have the right to be. Right. Like, uh, how do you tell people about that? A man has been excessively complimenting, complimenting me. me. Yeah. And so it sounds like you are just, like, they're like, okay, get over yourself. Like, he told you that you're beautiful and it's like no but think about like every single day before I went in this is how I think and I think this is a really good thing to listen to yourself when you know that like some to tell if something is really wrong is that every single day before I went in I had this like sick feeling in my stomach and hoped that he wouldn't be in there and I would think oh gosh like um is he gonna say something about like the shirt that I'm wearing today that I wear too much makeup like did um or like or on some days when I looked like shit I was like that made me feel weird to go in there looking like shit because he kept telling me how beautiful I was. And yeah. that even was weirdly playing with my head. Um, it's, it's just an odd yeah. thing. It's awful how this kind of stuff gets in your head like yeah. that. Um, and you find a way to blame yourself somehow. Yes. Yeah, where you're like, oh, am I encouraging this? Yeah. Am I being too friendly? Am I being right. too nice? Like. Am I giving off something that's making him think I want to hear this? Yeah, that I'm like, yeah. That, am yeah. I inviting this in some way that I can't see? Right. Um. Yeah. And so, and it just kept going, and it kept going, and then finally, I just, I just stopped going to the coffee shop altogether because I just like couldn't, I couldn't deal with that anymore. But looking back, I'm like, you know, I. But that was my solution was to just stop going. Yeah. It was, it was put on me to change my beloved routine in right. the morning yeah. instead of someone else being held accountable for his actions and just saying, you know, like I'm uncomfortable with how you're speaking to me. Please stop. Yeah. Or I just want to be treated like the guy behind me who's coming in to buy his coffee. Exactly. Like that's, I think that's what it really comes down to yeah. is you're just like, I don't, I didn't come here for you to tell me that I'm beautiful and I didn't come here for you to give me yeah. free coffee. I this came here. This is coffee shop. I'm prepared to pay. Yeah, I'm prepared to pay. Yeah. I have money. Like, I'm prepared to just buy my coffee and leave. And yeah. that's all I want to do, you exactly. know? So. I think um, it can be really hard in situations like that when it's making you feel uncomfortable. You know that this is not something, you know, he's not telling the guy behind you. You look so beautiful. You make my day when you come in here. No. So you know something's going on, but you choose, you know, not to go there anymore. Yeah. Or not to say anything because you're making a choice not to go through all of the rigmarole that society puts us through when we speak up. Yeah. You know, you're, you decided it's going to be too much of a hassle. And it's really sad that women have to go through that mental game with themselves and say, I'm just not going to say anything because... The repercussions are too much. Are too much. I think that what was interesting about it and what I remember telling my friends was that um, he was always, he was never like that when I would go in and there would be people around. He would, he would only say those things when it was like a really quiet day yeah. um, and it was when just like alone. he and I. Yeah. Um, so very unsettling and off-putting. And again, just one of those things that I think happens to women constantly yes. and just it's brushed off. I really like what you were saying about listening to yourself Mm -hmm. and knowing when something is making you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And then, you know, you can figure out, like, this is not right because of the way I'm feeling about it. That's literally the only measurement you need is how you personally feel. It's not how anyone else rationalizes it or how you rationalize it. If your gut is saying, I don't want to be in this situation, and then I think that's that's the part that you have to listen to and say, okay, I'm removing myself from this situation and or doing something like, you know, calling someone, finding some kind of, like, external help um, to get me out of the situation. This just happened to me and my sister-in-law. We were going into a pizza place to get pizza. They were like, your pizza will be ready in five minutes. And so we're waiting to get the pizza. This older gentleman walks in. He starts talking to us. He says, hey, ladies, you know, you're waiting for your pizza. Are you students here at the university? And we're having a conversation. And then he gets his pizza and tells us, I just wanted to say, you two are just some really gorgeous, gorgeous women. And, you know, we're in a pizza place. There's men behind the counter. They're not doing anything. No. We have to be like, 
you know what, sir? No, thank you. Yeah. Like, we're just here to get our pizza. Like, we are here to get our pizza. That's, I think that is the most frustrating thing about all of this yes. is that you're just like, I am here to get coffee. I'm here to get my pizza. I'm here to park my car. I'm here yes. to do these things that you, that men get to do. Yeah. You qu- get to walk, you got to walk in and get your pizza. Yeah. Can you give Let me the same pizza? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Then we walk out. Um, so he leaves. Then we got our pizza and walk out, and he's by his car. And, you know, this is, like, a dark night. He's alone by his car. We're alone by our car. You know, it's we're a little freaked out. And he's ruined our pizza-getting experience yeah. already. And he, as we walk by him to get into our car, he says, you know, I hope you weren't taking that the wrong way. I just think, you know, you're just, like, really beautiful women. And it's like, sir, no. I think that a, a whole bigger layer to this is just that, like... You know, it's like the society, it's that like society has placed this like expectation that you're going to be so grateful to be beautiful. Yes. Like, oh my gosh, well, thank you so much for affirming right. that you find me to be beautiful because that's my end goal as a woman. Yes. Is for everyone I look to look good for you. Yeah. And so when you're giving me this positive affirmation, you know, that's the I'm suppo- one thing I'm living for. Yeah. Today. I'm supposed to take that and just like that's supposed to make my day. And I think that. And I think that that's why he felt okay saying it yeah. because he somehow had validated that like, well, women want this affirmation because that's their goal yes. is to be beautiful. And it's that's like, that's why we went into the pizza shop yeah. that day. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things we were talking about was how the conversation is so often put on the woman's shoulders. Yeah. What did she do? How did she react? And, or just how even it's, um, so my friend who was, who shared, um, this, um, she was sharing with the, um, the Me Too movement on Facebook shared this, I'm paraphrasing, but there was a Ted talk by Jackson Katz who said essentially that we talk about how many women were sexually assaulted, not about how many men sexually assaulted women Exactly. or, um, how many girls in a school district were harassed, not about how many boys sexually harassed girls. So exactly. men and boys, that's, those are, are never brought into the, I mean, right. it's not in the narrative. It's, they're completely removed from it. Yeah. It's the same thing that they talk about, um, um, you know, rape culture on college campuses. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. We hope that we have made this feel like a safe space yes. for um, you guys to share your stories. Again, we really feel like the best way forward is to be as open and um, honest about our interactions. And we, you know, one thing that I was telling Kelly that was really prominent on the um, in the Me Too movement was that I saw from several of my friends who posted, uh, you know, I was wondering, it took me a while to post, um, to share this, um, because I wasn't sure if my own experiences were big enough, were a big enough deal, um, to be part of this movement, which says a lot about the treatment of women. It's so disappointing because, that that thought would even cross your mind. Yeah. That, because, you know. Right. That it has to get to the point where someone is, like, either physically hurt or, you know, right. something like that. For it like to that. become a big deal. Yeah. For it to be yeah. um, something that's, like, worth sharing. So we hope that we've created a safe space for you to share your stories and, you know, show that this is something that happens across the board yeah. and that, you know, if you're feeling uncomfortable, then it's a problem. Yeah. So we think, you know, we're stronger yeah. together when, you know, we share and just bring light to the many, many instances where, you know, you just brush it off. If we collectively all, you know, divulged these instances, it would, the amount of stories we would have to share would be, yeah, you know, overwhelming. So um, definitely share with us your own experiences in the comments below, and we will look forward to responding and um, having a dialogue with you guys about this. Yes. We will um, be talking with you guys back in the comments below. But um, in the meantime, check out theevergirl.com for more content, and we will see you guys next week.